So now with that being said, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to probably blow everyone's mind. And this is going to actually change things because our battery pack is going to be so weak. Now watch what happens when we go and place the average internal resistance of the battery pack that we've measured that has the crappiest, the, the weakest amount of resistance in terms of our IR value. Hey everyone, thank you for tuning in to another video here on the channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the performance differences between batteries that have different internal resistance. We're going to look at this from a theoretical point of view, understanding the differences there in internal resistance and using that in our spreadsheet. What we're going to do here is we're going to use our Patreon calc sheet. Anyone who is a tier one member has access and can download a copy of this entire spreadsheet. If you're looking for for the battery information, all you need to do is become a member of the tier two there on the Patreon community site and you can download a copy of the battery performance data chart that we have. And that includes all battery performance tests that we've done thus far. So thank you to all of the Patreon supporters for helping to make this battery performance testing possible, letting everyone know exactly how batteries that we are buying every day perform. This allows us to make better decisions when we buy batteries batteries if we're after the idea of performance because that's what we ultimately test for. We're looking at this from a purely theoretical view for the point of the video going over this calculator. Now if you have actual data from top speed tests that you've done, leave that in the comment section below with the batteries that you actually tested. I'm very interested in seeing what kind of results that you guys ended up testing and seeing if it matches some of the tests that I got here in the theory and the theory that we're going to cover as well as some of the tests that I've done with my car on the road. The first thing that we need to do here is jump to the right tab in our spreadsheet. You can see there's tons of different tabs on the bottom for all kinds of different calculators that you can download a copy of. So I'm going to go to the RC Gearing Speed KV calculator and we can start working with this to put our data in. Now the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to review the sheet for all of the green cells. Green cells are areas where we can have some input. So I've just fixed a cell here and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change to our setup that we're going to use. We said the limitless and we said that we're going to run a 2400 kV motor. That 2400 kV motor is going to be running on an eight cell pack. So this is the high performance motor that you can get from Castle Creations. Now what I've done here as well is I've selected the Arma limitless and we got a bunch of different vehicles in here. If you had a different manufacturer, you can see all the different types that you they have there to select. So we're going to go with the Arma limitless limitless and we're also going to go with custom gearing. We're going to make sure that the tire di diameter is correct and the custom gearing that we're going to do is because you can see on the very bottom when we do the initial calculation we don't have set parameters you know, locked in for the load factor and for our battery calculation. But even so, we're still getting kind of a ridiculous number. We're not going to hit 254 miles per hour on this setup. And the simple reason is, is because we don't have a correct gearing here selected. Now, if you did operate this radio control car at this type of load, you are going to more than likely have issues of heat in all kinds of different areas, such as the speed control, the motor, and the battery battery pack. Now this is exactly what helps out with that type of scenario, allowing you to understand when a, when a setup that you selected needs to have things tweaked to get more of a realistic type of speed. So let's go ahead and do exactly that. Our pinion gear that we're going to select on our custom gearing is 27 tooth and the spur gear that we use on the limitless is going to be a 45 tooth. Now all we do is we use a pinion gear on the center shaft that has a tooth count of 45 and that's essentially what I'm referring to as our custom gearing. We use two different pinion gears to form the gearing on that part of the car. So now you can see the, t the actual speed has dropped down to 300 kilometers an hour, 186 miles per hour. Now it still doesn't really make sense, but let's look deeper into the spreadsheet because we still talked about two areas that we still need to tweak. So the one area is load factor. And what the heck is a load factor? Well, the load factor here is ultimately just the difference in the KV as we know it, our unloaded value 
value here is 2400 as we've put in, but when we actually load the motor up, we're not going to see 2400 kV. That value is going to go down. So the load factor is actually going to be what pulls and sags that down. So the question is, is what do we actually select? Well, on the side we can see in blue that we have this chart. And since we are looking at a top speed radio controlled vehicle and this motor, it has quite some capabilities, but on the end of 150 plus miles per hour, we're gonna be heavily loaded. And with that understanding here, we can go with the heavily loaded motor parameters and we can choose anywhere from you know 11 to 15%. Now we wanna be conservative here. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you what happens when we choose 11%. If we choose the 11%, we're gonna get a high amount of speed out of this vehicle. Now if we choose the 15% we're going to see less amount of speed out of the radio control vehicle and we don't know exactly where the motor is going to end up but we can see within this range 160 to 170 something miles an hour is still extremely fast for this setup and more than likely our radio control vehicle is not going to do well especially for our first time trying to see this type of speed so do consider that when you're building out your setups here for the very first time. Uh, now the next thing to select after our load factor is placed in there is looking at the calculated loaded voltage per cell. And why this is important is because we know that under load our battery pack does sag in voltage. The more you load it, the more it sags. And it does sag based off of the internal resistance that we're ultimately seeking here in this video. Finding out the difference in internal resistance and how that actually affects our car. So really pay attention to the numbers here because things are going to get really crazy here here very shortly. So we're going to place our loaded current at speed. This is when the vehicle hits top speed and is no longer accelerating. We're going to put that somewhere in the neighborhood of 400 to 450 amps. Now, if you don't know this value, which most people would not know this value, what I tend to do in these types of situations is find specific data sets from those that are running the setup that you have and look at the data that you get from their sheet. And this is where you can get a good suggestion is it you know 100 amps 200 amps 300 amps 400 amps etc this is going to help you determine the value to place into this spreadsheet this is what i got from collecting my own data essentially with this exact setup so i know roughly what this thing should hit now what we're going to do here is we're going to look at the average internal resistance and we're going to do this based off of looking at the cnhl g plus battery pack. I have the data right in front of me here and the test that we did showing exactly how we determine the average IR. This came out to 1.4 milliohms per cell. So I'm going to place 1.4 in here and now you can see how our you know, data has changed. It's now showing speeds that we can get out of this at 238, 148 miles per hour. Now I used weaker batteries than this in the specific radio control car and achieved 216 kilometers per hour with this exact same setup. From our CNHL to a different battery, we're gonna go to the best performing battery that we've tested so far. I am definitely looking for a battery that we can test and throw on the channel that performs even better than the SMC around the 5,000 milliamp hour capacity mark. So what we achieved there in our SMC battery pack test is 0.95 milliohms. I'm going to go ahead and place that in there and you can see that the speed has now jumped up from where we were. We're now looking at the potential of 156 miles per hour, 251 kilometers per hour as our theoretical top speed, what we should see within this car. So now with that being said, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to probably blow everyone's mind and this is going to actually change things because our battery pack is going to be so weak now watch what happens when we go and place the average internal resistance of the battery pack that we've measured that has the crappiest the, the weakest amount of resistance in terms of our IR value now the weakest one that we have here is a 6.58 so I'm gonna place the 6.58 milliohms into this spreadsheet now watch what the result actually shows this is absolutely mind blowing and shocking. The, the amount of speed that we get out of this vehicle says 51 miles per hour, 82 kilometers per hour. So now if you really are able to follow what's going on in this spreadsheet, there is something that does not quite make sense anymore. And what that is, is that this battery pack is so underperforming for this type of application that the loaded voltage per cell at 450 amps is gonna be 1.24. Now the problem with that is because it's so under 
underperforming that the actual loaded voltage per cell is not going to happen because you're not going to actually be able to get and achieve the 450 amps on this battery pack. So it's not quite the same with a very, very weak battery. So this is kind of a difficult thing to, you know, understand and place into the spreadsheet. But essentially what we're doing here is we're probably not going to see the 450. We're going to be seeing somewhere more closer to the 250 to 300 or so on this battery. So we put 275 as a guess we're going to end up seeing a loaded voltage of 2.39, meaning that we can roughly hit, you know, there it is, 99 miles per hour. And that probably would be roughly where this battery pack would be able to get us as a result. I do know at 100 miles per hour, we're probably going to be somewhere around the 275, 250 amp mark. And if it was 250 amps that we actually are able to see, we're going to see a little bit more of a voltage increase getting us 106 miles per hour. So you can see a massive, massive difference between the amount of performance we get from a really, really good battery pack and the performance that we get from a fairly weak battery pack. Obviously with a calculator that can help predict things, we don't get exact answers unless we have some upfront information that we know about that we can enter into the spreadsheet. But with a few things that you know, which is going to be the load current at speed plus your load factor from the chart, you can get a pretty good estimate. And the whole point of the spreadsheet is to help eliminate poor setups that would end up destroying components such as your electronic speed control, brushless motor, or even overheating the battery packs, making a very, very dangerous situation for you. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I think it's really important to every single build to start out with a calculation so you know roughly where you are. And if you don't know exactly how to do that calculation, all you need to do is reach out, get help from somebody, and they will point you in the right direction to help select components, making certain that you end up with the best components to reach your goals rather than smoke coming out of every component in your radio control car.